Can you eat whole grains on a low carb diet? The truth in this video. First thing we're going to go through is the history of grains and what they do to your body when you eat them. And next we'll go through which grains you can eat on a low carb diet. And last we'll cover how whole grains fits in with the code red lifestyle. So let's talk about whole grains and the history. And first of all, let me just get this out of the way. I am not demonizing grain. I don't like to demonize any part of the a human diet because it creates a more diet mentality. I don't want to say it's good food and bad food and don't eat this and don't eat that. Really, I like to choose foods that get us either closer to our goal or further from our goal. So how does grains fit into all this? Well, let's look at the history of grains because believe me when I tell you that they are not the same nowadays, even 2000 years ago when Jesus was walking the planet, we have for lack of a better word, bastardized our grains over the decades. When grains came into the picture, it was a really good thing they did because it allowed us to then transport food. And being able to transport food meant that we could colonize the other parts of the country because a lot of people, we, we were um, hobbled to a certain area because we weren't able to find food or transport food and we couldn't go very far. We couldn't explore, we couldn't colonize, we couldn't build, we couldn't expand because we didn't have a way to transport food. But now we have grains, we had agriculture, we learned how to harvest grains and we now have food for our animals and for ourselves to be able to travel. And this was highly portable, it didn't spoil and things were really good. The problem is over the decades, especially even since your grandparents were coming up, we have crossbred, we have hybridized, we have really grown the living crap out of grains in the United States and overseas, and we are overproducing grains. We have bred our grains to produce the most grain per stock, and it's just not natural. Plus our soil is incredibly deficient. That's a different video for a different day, but our soil is so deficient. So we have deficient soil growing these crossbred grains and they're getting as much grain on the stock as possible. And we are overproducing grain on this planet. And why is that? Well, our government subsidized grains and grain farmers. I mean, we grow enough grains for 10 billion people on this planet. What do we have? Seven and a half billion people. So we are putting grains in everything. Not only are they in our food, but they're being used as a filler. So you'll find them in makeup. You find them in supplements. You'll find them in shampoos. It's a thickening agent. It's a filler and it's cheap. It's easy to get a hold of and it's cheap. And it's easy to produce. And yeah, farmers are being paid to grow grain. I mean, look at our USDA logo has a stock of grain on it. The problem we're running into nowadays is the fact that we have been so overexposed to grains and wheat in our society over the last few decades that our bodies are now producing antibodies to fight against it. So why do you think there's such a huge increase in autoimmune diseases, um, even in kids? I mean, my own 11 year old niece has autoimmune problems. So many people battle with autoimmune problems and it's because we're seeing grains as the enemy in our bodies because we've just given ourselves so much that we're now turning against them. And look, if you thought that grains were healthy, uh, it's not your fault. We were brainwashed to believe that they are. And again, back in the day, they used to be. Back in the day, we didn't overconsume them. They were a more pure plant the way that they should be. And we didn't eat a ton of them back in the day. But the USDA came up with the uh, food pyramid. You guys remember the food pyramid? Well, the largest part of the food pyramid on the very bottom said six to 11 servings of grain per day. And they made us believe that we need healthy whole grains in our diet. Well, there's nothing healthy and there's nothing whole about grains. It's not good. So we've been brainwashed to believe that we need a bunch of it in our diet and it's making us very sick and very fat. And it's driven by money. I mean, the food pyramid is driven by industry. The food pyramid is not based on science data and research. If that was the case, it would have been a very different looking food pyramid, but no, no, the grain industry was not about to be left out. A few points about grains that you might not know, they're packed with calories. 
They're nutritionally empty. There's no useful fiber. They spike the blood sugar faster than a Snickers bar, just like regular sugar. They trigger food intake, making you want to eat more and more and more. And oddly enough, over time, if you eat grains on a steady basis, you will actually change the architecture of your brain. Grains increase the risk of diabetes. And a lot of people who are intolerant of grains or certain grains, it'll increase the inflammation in your body and it's going to cause some serious problems. So my second point, can you eat grains on a low carb diet? Okay, you gotta first define what a low carb diet is. The definition of a low carb diet is anywhere under 100 grams of carbs per day. But in my book, that's still way too much. And why is that? I mean, it's better, and don't get me wrong, it's better than the standard American diet of 350 grams of carbs a day. I'm glad it's coming down, but it's still not good. And the reason is, when you're at 100 grams of carbs, carbs a day, mostly coming from whole grains, you're hovering right over that feel good mark because you're, you're giving yourself enough carbs to still use glucose to fuel your body. You haven't quite switched over to fat burning yet. And you're still, so you're still dealing with that foggy brain. You're still dealing with that, those headaches, the migraines, you're still getting pain in your joints. You still might have pain in your hands and your knees. You still might have that grain brain, wheat belly kind of fogginess that comes from eating too many grains. I'll tell you right now, when I eat too many grains, it causes inflammation in old injuries that I have. I was playing with some kids one time that came over to my house to swim in the pool and I threw one of the children in the pool and I tore my gluteus medius and every time I eat grains, that sucker starts hurting again. Doesn't hurt me at any other time, but as soon as I start eating grains, it aggravates my old injuries. I tore a latissimus dorsi muscle when I was water skiing and I just had a water skiing accident. Well, that starts to get aggravated as soon as I eat grains. So by even keeping that 100 gram a day mark, it's still, you're just, you're still hovering over that mark where you need to switch over to fat burning, but you can't do it because that's too many grams of carbs a day to make that switch. So a low carb diet means under 100 grams a day. To answer your question, can you eat whole grains on a low carb diet? Technically you can if you keep them under 100 grams a day. Most anybody that thinks low carb, they're not gonna have grains because it doesn't take much to get those, those carbs through the roof. I mean, you gotta think about how many, 36 grams of, I mean, I'm just talking off the top of my head here, 36 grams of carbs in one quarter of a cup of jasmine rice. Like that's a lot, that's a lot. I guess technically you can have grains, but you're gonna hit that 100 gram mark pretty quick if you add in whole grains. Before I go into my next point, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you think about grains. Cause if you were like me and you were raised on the traditional government guidelines, you were taught that you had to have grains and believe me, it wasn't so very long ago that I learned otherwise. How about you? What do you think about grains? Comment below. Tell me what you think. A quick story about my experience with grains. I did an experiment. I, I like to do nutrition experiments. That way I can always come to you and speak with some authority, at least when I experienced it. I was vegan from September 07 to September 08 for no other reason, just to try it. And let me tell you, it was a, a horrible experience. I was vegan for an entire year and I've never felt worse in my life. I fought at Madison Square Garden right in the middle of that March of 2008. It was one of my biggest fights ever. And I was vegan at the time and so, I always felt drained. I never felt, I never felt rested. I never felt strong. I was always feeling lethargic, foggy brain, fatigue. I had pain through my body. All those things that happen when you have too many grains. Even on a low carb diet, you can still feel those. And I lost that fight at Madison Square Garden. I'm not saying that I lost it because of veganism or anything. I'm not saying that. I'll tell you what they did. They had to come and get me. I was falling asleep on my dressing room floor when they came and got me for my fight. I was co-main event and I was falling asleep. So that's not good. You shouldn't be falling asleep during an exciting night. I felt rotten all the time because I had to rely so heavily on grains. And that's what the vegan diet does. When you are vegan, you're taking all animal products out of your diet where you're relying so heavily on 
healthy whole grains and legumes and we won't get into legumes and lentils. That's a, another video for another day, but it is because you've taken so many things out of your diet. You don't have a lot of, um, you don't have a lot of else to eat. So you do go heavy on the grains. So how does healthy whole grains fit in with the code red lifestyle? They don't fit in with the code red lifestyle. You probably guessed this, but zero grains whatsoever. That's because I want you feeling good. I want you to switch over to fat burning and not rely on glucose. Look, if you give your body a choice between glucose or ketones, it, the preferred fuel method for your body is glucose. It's easy, it's quick. So yeah, it would love for you to have whole grains, but it's not gonna be as efficient as burning fat for fuel. So what I do is look, I'm gonna save you from yourself. I wanna get this weight off you and I want you feeling good. And the only way to do that is to get you off all grains. This is gonna bring your blood sugar down. Remember high levels of blood sugar drives disease, cancer, sickness, everything. So we're gonna get that blood sugar down. It's gonna mitigate the pain and the inflammation through your body. It's gonna help that foggy brain go away. It's gonna help you have loads of energy. It's gonna help you sleep better. It's gonna help balance hormones. It's gonna get that testosterone up because high levels of carbs, high levels of grains, it suppresses the testosterone. Not good, not good. Even if you have PCOS, not good. So by taking you off all grains, it's really going to be the best option for you to lose the most amount of weight and be the healthiest person possible. So what do we eat on Code Red? Meat, vegetables, nuts, eggs, seeds, seafood, and fat. No grains. No grains on the Code Red lifestyle. And again, I'm not anti-grain. I'm not anti-carbs or anything like that. I'm anti you stalling. I'm anti you being in pain. I'm anti you being sick and fat and having loads of medication. And that is driven by grains in my opinion. So it's a new day. It's a different day and age. And that requires you getting off grains in order to feel your best self. Cutting grains out of your diet might be a whole new concept for you. And I heard, had a girl tell me here a few months ago, she said, I'm just against anything that cuts out complete food groups. But I don't think that grains are a good food group or even a food group anymore. They used to be like we talked about already, but they aren't anymore. They are not healthy the way we grow them and the way that we consume them today. So I don't think it's a bad thing eliminating that food group. I, it's just not optimal for your body. But a great way to get started is the 10 pound takedown because this gives you 30 days. You can do anything for 30 days to test out if I'm right. Let me prove to you that I'm right. Spend 30 days with me, eliminate all the foods on the do not eat side and only eat the foods on the eat side and see how you feel. You be the judge. Look, if you feel crappy eating eggs and bacon and steak and asparagus and cream cheese and cottage cheese, go back to your old ways of eating copious amounts of, of grain. You are the ultimate judge. You've got to feel good in this lifestyle, but this 30 day challenge gives you the chance to find out for yourself. Let me guide you through. I am going to spend a whole, a whole teaching on grain. Grains. We're going to go in depth and I'm going to go in depth every day, actually on lots of different subjects. So it's a really a great way to learn and unlearn what we've been brainwashing to believe. And I have a problem with an industry being paid a lot of money to brainwash people so that they buy more of their product. And guys, it's a new day. We have to start looking at food differently. We have to start looking at our bodies differently. If you want to lose weight and feel better, the 10 pound takedown challenge is the best place to get started. I linked it up below. So you just have to click that link and I'll see you in the next video.